Hi everybody, Bunny Berry here, 100 day ruffle challenge. I out of bed for a little while. I actually was in bed so long that my back started to hurt. I mean, that's bad. <laughs> but I am feeling be a little bit better, so I'm going to try to get up and move around a little bit. Today, while I was in bed, and over the last couple of days, I've been working on my schoolwork for the Institute of Integrative Nutrition. And today, actually it's taken me a couple days to get through this lecture because there's so much information in it, um, by uh, a doctor from the Harvard School of Medicine, a man named Dr. William Willett. And he's written several books, and I'll link to those books so that you can check them out. But today, I thought, it, you know, he's not a raw foodist. He doesn't talk about raw food at all. In fact, you know, most of the discussion today was about fat. And I thought, this is really interesting because even though I have a certain group of fats that I eat now, because I'm following a raw food lifestyle, I still see my family members and my friends being really irresponsible with the kinds of fats that they're using. So I and and you know I'm not the only raw I'm not the only person that lives in my house, but I am the only person who is trying to live a primarily raw lifestyle. So I try to read labels and I try to, you know, tell my husband, you know, punch him. I don't punch him. Just kind of hit him over the head with the ranch bottle. <laughs> we'll talk about this in a minute. Um, to try to make better choices at the grocery store. And one of the things that we have done and one of the things that Dr. Willem, uh, Dr. Willett, really stressed was getting the trans fats out of our diet. Now, he asked, how many people in this room know what a trans fat is? And obviously, everybody raised their hand. And he said, that's great, because 10 years ago, nobody knew what trans fats were, and we weren't talking about them. And um, now, the FDA has finally after being told by people like Dr. Willett for 10 years or more that they needed to start to pr produce on the label if something, if an oil or any substance has been hydrogenated, meaning turned from a solid block of fat, fake fat, <laughs> or soybean oil or whatever, they've like done something to it to make it solid um, when it doesn't naturally become solid, they have to let you know that they have then taken that altered substance, that altered oil, and put it into your food. Well, guess what happened? Amazingly, um, a lot of the food manufacturers because they had to start disclosing it on the label, they cut out trans fats from their food. Yay! I'm looking at a couple companies, but I'm not impressed by the number. Go look it up. It's not a lot. Ooh, KFC. No trans fats in KFC. I still want to go out and get a bucket of chicken, right? But um, this is something that I think that is really important because if you are just transitioning from a raw from a standard American diet, this is probably something that you had no idea about. During the 80s, they told us don't eat any fat, no fat. Fat is bad in all forms. You know, you're supposed to eat pasta and yogurt and you know bread. <laughs> That's it. You know, white like white bread. <laughs> That's it. Um, and maybe put some jelly on it and some sugar and sugar is really cheap and so lots of everything can be made fat free. They even made fat free mayonnaise which I don't understand because mayonnaise is made from eggs. But anyway, um, 
the deal is that in then they found out like oh hmm that all these people are getting diabetes and <laughs> why are they getting diabetes oh because they have so many carbohydrates in their diet and dr atkins then became very famous for his diet theory of don't add any carbohydrates to your diet and so now then everybody's like bread phobic and you know so it's no wonder that here we sit in almost 2010 and we have no idea what we're supposed to eat. Um, we're trying to figure it out and we're all navigating it here together. But if this is your first journey into something like a whole food diet or a raw food diet, or if you still fall off the raw food wagon, as it were, there are some things that really if you can just stay away from them, it's going to benefit your health long term, your heart health especially. And one of them is trans fats and also saturated fats. Okay? So polyunsaturated fats, monounsaturated fats are fine. And as a raw foodist, what we eat is actually those kind of fats are natural in the diet. We're eating olive oil, flaxseed oil, coconut oil. Um, ooh, coconuts, mm, coconut meat, avocados, uh, nuts, and seeds. If you can digest nuts, nuts give some people diverticulitis, so you cut out the nuts. But this is a good message that can start a health conversation with other members of your family. Like, for example, um, I have family members who still use, like, butter granules or spray butter on their food and I'm like why don't you just use regular butter you know I mean at least it's a whole food and you know it hasn't been processed why don't you just eat some raw butter or why don't you just eat some butter instead of like spray butter because you read the back of the bottle and it's like franken food well one of the things that Dr. Willett was talking about is like the difference between a low fat salad dressing and, and a high fat salad dressing. And he was saying that if he were on a diet, he would add more salad <laughs> to his diet and eat the full fat salad dressing. And this is a ranch, so this is something that I wouldn't eat just because, you know, I don't, I'm not doing dairy. But if you read, the ingredients on it, it's vegetable oil, and in comma it says soybean oil, water, egg yolk, sugar, salt, buttermilk, vinegar, and then the herbs and spices. All pretty, you know, pretty from nature ingredients, even though not vegan in any way. Now, if you saw the low-fat version of that, which I don't happen to have, it probably is going to start out by saying partially or completely hydrogenated vegetable oil, and there's going to be a ton more sugar in it. That's how they boost the flavor, and there may be even, you know, ingredients that you can't pronounce on the back of the bottle because that's how they made it low fat. So, with this holiday season, you get to be, well, not the food police, but take a look in your parents or your family or your friends' refrigerators and just start, you know, doing a little bit of sleuthing and investigating and seeing if they're eating things that have trans fats in them. And if they are, it might be a good way for you to bring up a health conversation and let them know that because that trans fat is unnatural, it's, it, it, it has been processed in a way that the body doesn't know how to process it internally and to get rid of it, that it is going to put them at a higher risk of heart attack and heart disease. So offer them, you know, say, good news, you can eat the, you can eat the whole fat version. Um, it might mean that you have to eat a little bit less of it. Uh, because, you know, total calories do count. But as you're transitioning, make sure that nothing you're eating has hydrogenated oils in it. And 
try to use it as a starting point for a conversation for people that you know um, who might need this message. Because we don't want to see anybody spraying butter on food when they can have actual butter and it's going to nourish their bodies and be better for them. Not that I promote butter or not that I promote anything. Just This is just information. Just information. Try to get your friends and family more on a polyunsaturated and a monounsaturated fat diet including olive oil, flaxseed oil, coconut oil which does not denature when you heat it, um, nuts, seeds, avocados, and beautiful, beautiful coconuts. I'll see you guys tomorrow and eat your veggies.